Okay, so one of the things we get a lot of questions about uh, is what can I, as the handler, do uh, to help my dog for their protection work? What things can I work on with the dog that are going to help the dog be better in the protection work? Uh, an unfortunate reality for all of us is that we don't all have an experienced uh, training decoy to teach our dogs proper biting stuff or don't have access to it as frequently as we'd like to. We tend to look at play with the handler and bite work as different activities. So as the dog develops, those things diverge uh, into two different worlds. But when we're talking about puppies, as pre-teething puppies, and the very beginnings of early adolescence especially, uh, there's a lot of the things that we're doing with the handler, playing with the dog, uh, that have parallels in bite work. A lot of that is very similar work, like tugging, targeting work, all those sort of basic things. So, uh, hopefully you've all watched the tug video, but <laughs> if you haven't, we we'll talk a little bit about when we're playing with our puppies, one of the things that you're teaching the puppies is to like to play, to use their mouth, but also to, to hit a certain target. And we vary the target. So when we're playing with the dog, I give the target on my right side, I give the target on my left side, I turn my back and give the target on my right side, I turn my back and give the target on the left side. So one of the things that we're doing by playing well with your puppies and using a toy, a t uh, one of the various tugs, you can actually start to help their targeting behavior. So the more you do of that, the better your dog is gonna be at targeting when you bring it to the bite work. The other thing that we definitely teach ourselves away from the bite work is the out, letting go. Right? It's really critical that you pre-teach the out in play before we try to take it to the protection work. We do not want to be teaching that to our puppy during puppy bite work. So that's another thing that you can do. A big thing you can do is work on the puppy's confidence and attitude about new places by taking that puppy a lot of different places and playing with them. So again, if, I take, if my puppy's playing tug with me well, and I take that puppy out to new places and play with them, then I'm introducing environmental stressors we talked about during our various stressors in a productive way for that puppy. So that puppy tends to look at new places and not focus on the, new, the novelty of the environment and be able to focus their energies into some activity. And so the more I do that, the more likely my puppy is to be okay when I travel someplace new and practice bite work skills. The other thing we can do is we can get our puppy used to the equipment we're going to use. Right? So we talked about the harnesses and, and, well, one of the things, I don't want to bring my puppy out, put a harness on my puppy for the first time and then say, hey, let's go do bite work. They're not familiar with the equipment and they stop and they scratch at the harness and, they're, and it's distracting to them. So obviously as a handler, you can take your puppy out and familiarize them, let them wear the harness, take them for walks on the harness until the puppy's comfortable with that. And you can get the dog used to somebody pulling on the harness while you're playing with them. So I can be playing tug with my puppy, he chases the tug, bites it, and while he's biting, I can grab and hook a finger in his harness and pull a little bit and then let go and tug with him again and pull a little bit and then let go. And by doing that, I'm familiarizing him not only with the sensation of the harness and wearing it, but also with pressure on it uh, while he's biting on something. So you can play and do that sort of thing as well. So a lot of our early play especially the very young puppies, is exactly the same as the stuff we're doing in bite work. As we go and hit adolescence, that starts to change. So for most puppies, some dogs it, it stays closer to the same, but for most of them, their intensity level, they're looking at it slightly confrontationally, and there's a divergence in those worlds. Uh, and so one of the things that people become obsessed with, it's a warning here, is one of the things that people become obsessed with is how the puppy is biting on the toy when they're playing with them. So, so many people are, are trying to fix their dog's gripping problems in bite work while they're playing with their puppy. In my experience, this doesn't work very well. Right? In an attempt to try to fix the dog's gripping behavior through play, usually the handlers take the fun out of the play. Play between the handler and the dog even though we can accomplish certain goals with that that carry over to protection work, is primarily to make a fun, interactive reward between the handler and the dog. And if I start obsessing about how the dog's biting the toy, whether they have it all the way back in their mouth, whether they're pulling or pushing, or all these various things that we tend to focus on in protection work, I can actually take the fun out of that activity for the dog. And I find it there's very little carryover between adult dog play behavior 
and adult dog bite work behavior. I know many, many, many first class biting dogs that bite very well in the protection work and are munchy when they play with a toy with their handler or they hold the toy in the front of their mouth or they chew on it. There's a variety of things like that. So I don't worry, don't obsess about this. But when you're playing with a young puppy, there are good habits that you can get established. Good chase habits, good target habits, and the beginning of control, and good socialization benefits as well. Putting the dog in drive in new places is always beneficial to our young dogs.